Croissants get their flaky layers through a process called lamination, where layers of fat are rolled between a yeasted dough. And we're gonna start with a pretty basic dough. Here I have four and a quarter cups of King Arthur unbleached all-purpose flour. And we found that King Arthur flour has a higher protein content than other all-purpose flours. And more protein makes the dough more elastic, which makes it easier to work with. And if you can't find King Arthur all-purpose flour, you can substitute bread flour. But the dough might be a little tougher to roll out. So to that flour, we're gonna add four teaspoons of instant yeast and two teaspoons of salt. I'm just gonna whisk that together. All right, now for the wet ingredients. We're going to use a lot of butter in this recipe, and that's what makes croissants so delicious. So you need to splurge for the good stuff here. The European style butter with a fat content of 83%. See, standard butter is usually around 80% fat, but that small percentage makes a big difference in this recipe. Higher fat butter is easier to work with, and it makes for flakier croissants because the fat helps the layers puff up. And our favorite European style butter is plugra. So this initial dough has a little butter in it, which adds a little bit of richness. You need to start by melting three tablespoons of butter, which I've already done, and the rest of that butter, all whopping 12 ounces of it, needs to be very cold. So go ahead and put that in the fridge. But to the dough, we're also gonna add one and three quarter cups of whole milk, which I set out a while ago so it could come down to room temperature. And to that milk, add the melted butter and a quarter cup of sugar and just whisk that together until the sugar is dissolved and that should happen pretty quickly. All right. So using your dough hook, turn the mixer to low and slowly add the milk mixture to the flour mixture. And depending on how cool or warm your milk is, you'll notice that some of the butter does coagulate along the side of the measuring cup. So just go ahead and use a spatula to just scrape it into the bowl. You don't wanna leave any of it behind. So you'll probably also need to scrape down the dough from the sides of the bowl, but after about two minutes, it will form into a cohesive dough. All right, so the dough has come together, so increase the speed to medium-low and knead for one minute. See, we don't want to develop too much gluten at this point in the recipe. That will happen later when we're rolling it out. All right, that looks ready. And just note that it's not going to be a smooth dough at this point. So if it does climb up your dough hook, just take it off with your hands here. All right, just go ahead and cover the bowl tightly with plastic wrap and let the dough rest on the counter for 30 minutes. This is gonna give the gluten in the dough some time to relax. Okay, the dough has rested, so now it needs to chill in the refrigerator. And that's gonna be a common theme in this recipe. So, transfer the dough to a parchment paper lined rimmed baking sheet. This looks pretty good and just press it into a 10 by 7 inch rectangle, which will be about one inch thick. And just cover it with some greased plastic. All right, so we're gonna refrigerate this for two hours. And this step helps to slow down the yeast so that the dough doesn't puff up too much while you're rolling out the croissants. Okay, so while the dough is chilling, let's turn our attention to the rest of that butter. Remember, this is 12 ounces or 24 tablespoons of European style butter. So place the chilled butter directly on the counter and now beat it with a rolling pin until the butter is just pliable but not warm. There we go. And again, you don't want it totally softened at this point. All right, that looks great. So go ahead and fold the butter in on itself using a bench scraper, and then beat it into roughly a six inch square. Okay, so to make sure the butter is a perfect square, we like to use a parchment packet. I have a pre-folded one here, but to make one, you start with a 24 inch piece of parchment. I'll show you. And you fold it in half to create a 12 inch rectangle. Then fold over the three open sides to form an eight inch square with enclosed sides. Increase those folds firmly, and then unfold the parchment envelope. And using your bench scraper, transfer the butter to the center of the parchment. 
and then just refold the edges and turn the packet over so that the flaps are underneath. Okay, and using this rolling pin, you're going to gently roll until the butter fills the parchment square. And you want it to be in a nice even layer, so start in the center, work your way out, and you're going to find that you'll do that continually throughout this process. Okay, this looks terrific. And now I'm going to transfer this to the refrigerator for at least 45 minutes until the butter's nice and firm. Now transfer the dough to the freezer for 30 minutes. This additional chill will help make the dough easier to work with. Okay, now we're ready to merge the dough and the butter. Keep the butter in the refrigerator until you are ready to use it so that it stays very cold. But we're going to start by rolling out the dough. So start by lightly flouring your counter and make sure to keep it floured throughout this entire process. You don't want any stickiness. All right. That looks good. So we actually prefer to roll these out on the counter since it gives you a nice cold surface. So this dough here is nice and firm. Transfer it from the parchment lined rim baking sheet to the counter. And I'm gonna roll it into a 17 by eight inch rectangle, making sure that the longer side is parallel to the edge of the counter. And keep your ruler handy. This is gonna be your best friend throughout this recipe. Okay, so that looks great. I'm going to go grab the butter from the fridge. Okay, so unwrap the butter and just peel off the parchment. Butter's nice and firm. And place it directly in the center of the rectangle. Now fold the dough over the butter so that the sides of the dough meet in the center. And then using your fingertips, press down firmly so that it creates that nice seam there with your fingertips. And this begins the actual process of lamination. So now we're going to start rolling and seal the butter in by pressing firmly on each open side because you don't want the butter to squeeze out the ends. So start rolling away from yourself. We're looking for a 24 by 8 inch rectangle and you want to make sure that you have enough flour on the counter. All right, we have a 24 by 8 inch rectangle. Okay, so right now you're going to fold the bottom third of the dough over the middle and then fold the upper third over the middle so that it looks like a business letter. So this will form an eight inch square and this is the first fold. So we have three layers of dough right now and now you want to roll it out again. But turn the dough 90 degrees counterclockwise and repeat the rolling and folding into thirds. So this is the second turn, and we found that three turns was enough to create a light and flaky pastry with hundreds of layers. More than that, and the dough gets hard to work with. So before the final turn, we are going to chill the dough. Return the dough to that parchment lined sheet from earlier and wrap it tightly with greased plastic wrap and let the dough rest in the freezer for 30 minutes. All right, the dough has chilled, so now it's time for that final turn. You can see I've transferred the dough to the counter, and the top flap of the dough is facing right. So now it's time to roll the dough into a 24 by 8 inch rectangle, and then fold it into thirds. And the dough might be a little hard to roll at this stage because it has developed more gluten. One last fold, and then we're going to return the dough to the baking sheet. Wrap it tightly with plastic, and then we're going to refrigerate it for at least two hours or up to 24 hours. We have turned this dough three times, which means there are 27 alternating layers of dough and butter. And all of this work laminating will definitely pay off when you see the layers of the flaky croissants. So I've transferred the dough to this counter, and now it's time to roll it out into an 18 by 16 inch rectangle. Make sure the longer side of the dough is parallel to the edge of the counter. And it might take a little bit of elbow grease to roll the dough out at this point. Okay, that looks good. Now fold the upper half of dough over the lower half. And then using your ruler, mark the dough at three inch intervals along the bottom edge with a bench scraper. Basically what we're doing here is we're making some kind of a guideline for cutting the croissants so that they're even. So now you're going to measure along the top of the dough and you're going to start one and a half inches from the left side. And from this mark, measure out three inch intervals. You should have six marks along the top of the dough. All right. So a pizza wheel works very well for cutting the croissants, but you can also use a chef's knife. 
So starting at the left corner, you're gonna cut the dough into triangles from mark to mark. So you're basically connecting the dots at this point. And if the dough starts to soften as you're cutting, just return it to the freezer for 10 minutes or so. Okay, you can discard these scraps. And here we have 12 single triangles and five diamonds. You're gonna separate the triangles from the rest of the dough and unfold the diamonds. All right, and using that same pizza cutter, cut the diamonds into 10 single triangles. You will have 22 equal size triangles. So now start shaping the croissants one at a time and keep the rest of the cut dough loosely covered while you work. To shape the croissants, cut one half inch slit in the center of the flat end of one dough triangle. Grasp the two corners of either side of the slit and stretch the dough gently. Grasp the bottom point of the triangle and stretch the bottom point and place the triangle on the counter so that the point is facing toward you and fold both sides of the slit so they're facing down. Start rolling towards yourself. And once you're about halfway down, gently grasp the point again and stretch it out just a little bit more. Then continue to roll, tucking the point underneath at the end. And just curve the ends gently toward one another to create a crescent shape. So place this on the parchment lined rimmed baking sheet. You're gonna end up with two baking sheets with six croissants each and a third baking sheet with 10 croissants. Repeat this rolling with the remaining triangles. These croissants look great. So now cover the two baking sheets loosely with some greased plastic wrap and we're gonna let them rise until they have nearly doubled in size, which should take about two and a half to three hours. But if you wanna make these in advance, unrisen croissants can be refrigerated for up to 18 hours. They will need three to three and a half hours to rise at room temperature though before baking. Now wrap the third baking sheet tightly with plastic wrap and put them in the freezer until they're solid. And after two hours, transfer those frozen croissants to a zipper lock bag and then return them to the freezer. The frozen croissants can be stored in the freezer for up to two months. And when you're ready to bake them, just arrange them on two baking sheets and increase the rising time by one to two hours. While the croissants are rising, adjust the oven racks to upper middle and lower middle positions and preheat the oven to 425 degrees. So as you can see, these croissants have really puffed up. But before we bake them, we need to make a quick egg wash and we're gonna brush them on top of the croissants. So lightly beat one large egg with one tablespoon of water and a pinch of salt. All right, and then gently brush them onto the croissants. And the egg wash is gonna help promote even browning and it's also gonna help create a beautiful sheen on top of them. Okay, so now it's time to place the croissants in the oven and immediately reduce the temperature to 400 degrees. You're gonna bake the croissants for 12 minutes. And after 12 minutes, switch and rotate the baking sheets and then continue to bake them until the croissants are deep golden brown, which will take eight to 12 minutes longer. Transfer the croissants to a wire rack and let them cool for 15 minutes. You can serve them warm or at room temperature if you prefer. So with some planning ahead and a little patience, you can make delicate, flaky croissants at home that rival any bakery. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later. <laughs>